another episode of With the Chiefs. Wait, 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 wait. Man, I need more rest. I hope you've got, I've got your last name right there. It's a very good pronunciation. You should know better than that now, Dom. I know. <laughs> <laughs>Welcome back to another episode of With the Chiefs. My name's Dominic Bullock, the uh, second place uh, getter at the One Day to Man the Office. <laughs> and I've got with me Luke Smith. And today we are joined by Luke Barrett. Uh, he's a man that you should be familiar with. He's a bit of a, a big name in the YouTube world. And he's um, got some incredible filmmaking skills and a pretty um, cool journey that he's documented on his YouTube channel. Um He's an endurance athlete and has completed multi-day uh, bike packing adventures, as well as numerous 100-mile runs, including uh, recently uh, completing UTMB this year and placing third at um, the Cozy Miler last year. So welcome to the show, Luke. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Good to be here. <laughs> awesome. Um, usually we kind of just start the show off just by running through what everyone's been doing recently in their training. Um, so what's the last week sort of look like for you? Uh, I mean, uh, like I literally just stepped back in the door from uh, my long run. Um, so uh, yeah, I was out in the bush um, for four and a half hours. Um, uh, yeah, which is, um, yeah, like you said, I was sort of over in Chamonix for UTMB, um just probably a few months ago now but the body still feels like it was pretty recent so uh training yeah running running probably feel it's still feeling a little harder than it should be at the moment but um yeah slowly but surely we're getting there um yeah just trying to be patient and consistent and keep showing up and trust the process that you know it'll come back eventually um but uh yeah apart from that I'm sort of yeah um in that sort of 100k a week 120k a week sort of realm um so uh yeah that's 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 where training's been at for me recently yeah awesome um and how'd the run go today it sounds like it went not too bad uh yeah look it wasn't the worst um <laughs> uh yeah i was uh i mean i'm i'm based down in thoreau which is sort of north end of wollongong um yeah within arms reach to sydney um but yeah sort of have um uh yeah this sort of national park escarpment kind of right right behind me which um yeah it's about a k on the road before i can get into trails for yeah sort of as long as i want so um yeah just uh sort of did a big big out and back um over to mount kira uh, with a with a bit of bit of everything uh we're pretty lucky down here it's sort of um yeah you easily get that sort of you know yeah three to five hundred meters of vert every 10 k's um and then yeah you can you can sort of work in a little bit more elevation if needs be but um yeah i think today was 40 41 k's with like 1400 meters so um yeah and just yeah trying to trying to make it feel good at the moment <laughs> yeah yeah um yeah, yeah, yeah. um that's pretty cool. It sounds like it's pretty underrated down there. Like uh, in Sydney, you're kind of like stuck for trying to find vert and get uh, trail runs in. But um, yeah, you don't hear too much about like Wollongong and uh, that sort of area. I guess they've got um, the uh, Coastal Classic, I think, the race down there. Yeah, uh, that- it's, um, I mean, yeah, like the Coastal Classic, um, it seems like every year they're adding more section of boardwalk. So it's becoming more of like a road run with some soft sand sections. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'm ju- just south of that. I can oh, I can link up trails to to there, but that's probably, um, yeah, another sort of 20 Ks north of me. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, I, I think the land ownership, kind of thing is is tricky down here so the trail a lot of the trails are sort of unofficial or you know the council says they're trails but the ward board says they aren't so uh, i think that just makes it really tricky to put on races Uh, we don't actually really have a race on down here uh, which is crazy because some of the trails are are, are spectacular and there really should be a race here 
um, yeah, so often I find myself like kind of in like, you know, I might be like five Ks from home and I'm like in this beautiful dense rainforest that you can like look through to like ocean views. <laughs> and that's like, why, why, why aren't more people here? Um, so it, it is a little hidden gem down here for sure. Um, yeah. So yeah, we're lucky we're for sure. Lucky. Awesome. I'll, we'll have to get down there sometime. Like it sounds pretty incredible. Yeah, it's good. Um, what about you, Smitty? How's your training been going? Um, not much, not much has changed. Obviously we recorded an episode not, not, not too long ago, but, um, uh, when that, that was on, that was on Tuesday, I, I got back into, so I did a medium sort of, or midweek long run today. So it's probably the first time back over 15 Ks or, or maybe I've done one previously, but it was nice to just run a little bit longer. I think it ended up being close to 80 minutes. So, um, Hammy still is agreeing with me after even the Tuesday session. So I'm happy with that. But outside of that, not a whole lot's changed. I think I'm still just going to um, be doing a bit of base training, call it for the next month or two months. And then we'll probably have a crack at uh, Rhodes Park Run, maybe. Um, are you going to have a crack at that, Dom, by the way? Uh, yeah, I'll have a go, but I'm not sure. How fast where you'll be. be yeah yeah, yeah. um yeah but that, that's that's it just happy to you know still be still be um running without an irritated hammy so yeah but that's good um <laughs> what about what about you dom are you any progress on your yeah and up legs from from the ultra yeah uh no running yet i don't know i feel like just mentally i'm a bit exhausted from it all probably in a similar boat to luke i guess but it's a bit different doing 80 Ks to hundred miles. Um, <laughs> yeah, true. But I feel like I've just been going pretty hard at it. Like I trained for 12 weeks in the lead up to Berlin and then another like four or five weeks in the lead up to this. So um, I think it's yeah, probably just time to chill out a bit and take it as it is. So um, I'm kind of enjoying just a bit of time off and not stressing about running too much. Mm, and you're back at, you're back at work as well next week. So yeah. That'll be that'll be a change of pace after having six months or so off. So yeah, exactly. Anyway. Um, but yeah, I'm sure I'll be able to juggle all of that. Um, of course. Anyways, back to Luke. Um, it'd be interesting, yeah, to kind of just uh, dig into like how uh, your whole sort of running story began and um, where it all sort of started for you. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I mean, I I. Um, as a yeah sort of through all through high school I was a competitive cyclist uh so track and road um my my dad um my dad was a cyclist back when he was a, a sort of a teenager and um yeah he he'd kept all his like club trophies and stuff uh, so as a kid I remember like you know foraging through like under the kind of boxes under the house and finding it uh one day um just being like whoa my dad's a hero like he's got all these trophies <laughs> um and uh <laughs> yeah and so uh he he kind of um he never went on with it or did anything good um but continued cycling just recreationally um and uh yeah the, I think yeah uh, the end of primary school I sort of said hey can I get a bike I think that looks fun um so yeah all through high school raced um competitively um yeah like to yeah um to the, I mean that was my that was my dream when I was in in high school to be a to be a pro to go to Europe and um yeah I sort of invested a whole whole bunch of time in into racing and training um sacrifice parties and friends and all that sort of thing like so endurance 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 sport and training is um you were sort of ingrained in me since then um and yeah I went on one or two overseas trips and um yeah never sort of lit up the national scene but was in there sort of nearly nearly with a shot um and I uh, sort of got to the end of high school and it, it didn't happen um and so sort of gave up on the dream of being a pro then um and I don't think I was cut out for it I was not not as good as what you need to be but um 
yeah, then sort of um, kept cycling a little bit, but without the intent of, you know, racing or anything. Um, and then, yeah, started started sort of my work career, which is sort of hospitality. Um, and, uh, yeah, ended up sort of run commuting. Um, I'd get a lift to work and then I'd run sort of 10Ks home, uh, like, you know, three or four times a week um and uh yeah that was sort of the beginning of my 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 running journey but was um wouldn't have wouldn't have called myself a runner yet at that point um how'd you get that idea do it just just... I mean I had like yeah one of my friends was is um Eloise Wellings who's like an Olympic middle distance runner I think she she stepped up to the marathon now um, and they like they basically lived across the road from us. So um, occasionally I'd sort of get dragged into, you know, flogging myself to keep up on one of her sort of easy recovery runs. <laughs> um, but uh, but I think it was just more a product of wanting to wanting to do some form of exercise um, and run commuting seemed to be the most sort of efficient way of um, of doing that. And it's funny now because at, at that point, um, running was appealing because it was like heaps more time efficient. Like you could run for 40 minutes and that was like a good workout done. Uh, Whereas cycling, you sort of, you know, two, three hours, um, which is funny now that I've ended up in the kind of ultra scene where I'm (laughs) running for as long as I was cycling. Uh, But, um, but yeah. And then um, I guess moved down. uh, That was in Sydney. Um, And then moved down to Thoreau probably, eight years ago um and yeah where we are it's kind of this little residential pocket pocket nestled between the ocean and the bush um and without it's beautiful um but without sounding sort of too privileged um and 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 snobby i got really sick of just running north and south i wanted more options there aren't heaps (laughs) of road options Um, and they're all beautiful but like there's two run two road runs you can do um and so, uh, yeah, I was sort of like, well, I either kind of go east and start surfing or I go west and start exploring what's up in the bush. And so, um, yeah, started started exploring up there and got hooked. Um, yeah. That's awesome. Um, did you have like any big crashes or anything when you were cycling? I feel like that would be my biggest fear um, getting into the sport. Uh, yeah, I mean, you always, yeah you always lose a little bit of skin here and there um it's not fun (laughs) um uh, yeah I I used to I used to I used to think of myself as a very good descender um but I remember one time um yeah descending in the wet in the Royal National Park and sort of yeah came in too hot into one corner and lost my front wheel and then yeah um yeah, had a nice touch down there and sort of never, never regained the confidence <laughs> um, since then. Um, but nothing too drastic. I was, I was pretty lucky. No broken bones. Um, yeah. Uh, but it, it kind of, now that I'm, um, now that I'm running more, uh, I'm, I would be quite wary of riding my bike on the road. I think um, I'm not sure how my parents were so fine with me just riding my bike amongst traffic all the time. Uh, but, uh, but no, I was lucky. I never, never had any major incidents. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's good to hear. Um, and what about your, your first running race? When was that? Uh, so when I was doing, when I was sort of run commuting, uh, I'd, I'd sign up and do the, um, Sutherland to surf, uh, which oh, is the kind of the Shire's equivalent of the city to surf. Um, and it's, it's like 11 K's that's net down. Uh, and so I, I think I'm pretty sure my 5k PB is still from that race. Um, uh, so, uh, yeah, I'd sort of maintained a, a, a reasonable fitness base from my cycling days. Um, so I think, yeah, I think my, my 11 K time was, I think I ran 40 minutes twice, uh, like on the dot. Wow. Um, so uh yeah they would have been my first running races um uh but when i when i'd moved down here and was sort of um sniffing around the trails uh i um 
my first trail race was the um uh Jabalani 45 I think oh, yeah. uh, and I, I still remember the Sunday before running 30 k's and being finishing finishing that run being absolutely smoked and thinking there's no way I'm gonna make it another 12 k's in, in one at this time uh yeah I felt like I was definitely in over my head for sure um uh, and I mean you get it done as is the way that um yeah, the, I approach most of those long races. You kind of just, uh, you figure it out. Um, but uh, I think that would have been 2018, I think. Um, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, sort of find myself prone to excess. So you always look to what's the next one that's slightly longer and then slightly longer or slightly harder. And yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not sure where it's going to end, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And um, then moving into like uh, the more recent sort of races, um, it seemed like Cozzy was a, a bit of a breakthrough for you or? Uh, yeah, I mean, that was uh, that, that was a good day for sure. <laughs> uh, I think uh, probably the reality is, is that was sort of the pretty close to the perfect race for me um there's there's still a big part of me that that wants to believe that I can be better than that so I'm training training with the belief that you know I can at least uh at least get to that level again um but uh yeah look I I I, I my intent to uh, of doing that race was to just get the UTMB stones to enter the lottery um so uh yeah it was very much just i'll do the miler because you can get more stones uh we we'd sort of we'd sort of loosely plan to go to europe regardless of whether utmb happened or not um and so i was like oh well i did i did the uta uh i think it was six weeks beforehand uh and then the miler which gave me seven stones in total and i was just i was just planning on just entering the lottery um and yeah sort of about halfway um there was a there was a boat crossing in that that race and i remember chatting to um one of the volunteers there just sort of asking him sort of who's winning and what what the front of the what the front end of the race is looking like and he was like oh you're actually you're in fifth right now and fourth is like in that boat just there <laughs> um so that it's yeah that was um that, that was a big shock to be honest uh that I was there at that point in the race um and then yeah I had sort of in the, in all the sort of projections of where I was going to be when um had planned to sort of slow down and die but um I just did it I had had legs at the end and I I, I, I finished strong and um yeah the guys at the front were duking it out and um yeah, Reese Edwards cooked himself and pulled the pin, and um, yeah, I sort of ran myself into third place, and um, yeah, was was running scared, sort of looking over my shoulder until I until I crossed the finish line because I couldn't believe it because um, I was aware that um, yeah, the the top three got got sort of automatic entry into UTMB, so um, yeah, for sure, pretty ecstatic with that um as uh, as a race but also then as kind of what that meant for UTMB um yeah yeah it was good good day how does that yeah. whole point system or I'm not familiar with how, how it works to get into that race um yeah how do you qualify in general I mean I think it's it's been a it's been a bit of a a, a tricky couple of years because Ironman are sort of working their way into the ownership structure of UTMB Right. Um, and so, uh, I think in, yeah, in recent days, it sort of seems more and more like they're just sort of bullying race directors into, um, playing their game, but, uh, basically they, you have to run rate like a r races owned by, uh, uh, owned by Ironman or affiliated with Ironman to get points to enter the, uh, to the, enter the lottery, um, for UTMB. So. Right. Um, okay. just capitalizing on the success of of utmb and leveraging off that to you know 
make their other races more profitable. It's smart business, but um, you kind of feel for the little guys, I think, a little bit in there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, it's um, it's interesting. I think like a big sort of change and um, kind of, yeah, different values to kind of what the trail sort of community values. And um, I think it used to be all about the little races a bit more and now the big guys are sort of coming to the table. Um, but the the year at trip then, so that kind of like guaranteed UTMB was on the cards. Um, what did your training look like from then on and um, what was the plans for your trip? Yeah, I mean, uh, to, to give it all, throw everything at it was kind of it was kind of the plan. Um, yeah, we, um, my partner had a whole bunch of long service leave, and so uh, originally her plan was just to go and you know run around the mountains um, and have a nice holiday, and, you know, eat food and drink wine, and um, yeah, have an actual holiday. Um, and then I was like, oh, that sounds fun. I might you know, I might like to join you. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, sort of worked out that that line, like the European summer lines up with UTMB. So it was like, oh, well, maybe I'll just enter the lottery. And if I end up there, then that works. And um, the reality is I definitely hijacked what was her long service leave holiday <laughs> um, into, yeah, what, what, what was, a UTMB training block. <laughs> um, although she ended up entering TDS and, and raced that as well and did phenomenally well. So um, we were both racing and training together. So um, yeah, we kind of shared that experience. Um, but yeah, it was, um, we sort of took, took as, took as much time off work and as we could afford um, and ended up in Europe for seven weeks in total um so about six weeks beforehand to train um and then yeah sort of a week to recover and hop on a plane to come back home um yeah and the way that we planned it was basically to to holiday around the the tmb route um to and i think originally the idea was so i could you know really reconnaissance the trails and um see every kind of you know, rock and corner and turn and tree root that the course had. Uh, but in actual fact, what was what was heaps more enjoyable was running the trails off the TMB. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, and I mean, when you, like basically the, U, the UTMB, which follows the TMB route, um, mm -hmm. it, it just kind of, it takes, it takes the most efficient way around, around the mountain. Um, and so if you're staying in one spot, um, the the race really just, it just kind of blasts through all the towns. Um, so if you wanted to reconnaissance the course from staying in one spot, you know, you run 10 Ks one way and then 10 Ks back. And that's, you know, where for a 20 K run, you've only got 20 Ks of, the, of 10 Ks of the course. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I ended up sort of, um, yeah, e each place that we stayed at was sort of, um, like an extra sort of 40 Ks around um, the route. Um, so I ran, I sort of ran between our, our Airbnbs most times, uh, nice. which was enough, uh, you're seeing enough of the course then. Um, but we had about a week in each spot and uh, yeah, the trails, the trails off that, that TMB route, it's spectacular. <laughs> um, yeah. So um yeah i really got got a feel for those different towns along the route for sure yeah yeah awesome sounds um pretty good uh, i think that yeah it's interesting to hear that the trails off the route are probably better rather than um the actual race itself like you don't often hear too much about i don't know anything else outside of the the race really and um people yeah i'm usually just going over there to wreck it so I think that's some good insight um, yeah i think i think like uh yeah if you wanted to just get the the route reconnaissance uh you you just sort of do it in four days or whatever you're kind of how many how many days wherever that kind of that limit is for you distance per day there's plenty of places you can stop along along the way 
Um, but mm. sort of doing it in a loop with if, if it's fast packing or there's plenty of tours that run, uh, I think that's probably enough to to see to see the course. Um, but the way we did it was, um, I mean, the idea was sort of uh, to have such a good holiday beforehand that even if our races sucked, we'd come home having a good time. <laughs> uh, we didn't want to go over there for like a week race you have a bad time and then go oh well that was a bit of a waste of flights and money and um so yeah the the the, the running and the the training and um you know experiencing the culture beforehand was um yeah that was that that's the highlight of that experience for sure um but not to minimize utmb that was cool for sure as well um but uh yeah doing kind of it's funny you talk to runners and they're like yeah yeah that sounds amazing like running in in the alps for six weeks like that's so lucky and then you you know come back home and talk to people who aren't runners and they're like so where else did you go though what did you do <laughs> we literally just ran like and then come home and cook food and do it again <laughs> eat sleep repeat uh so it was definitely a, a, a an indulgent runner's holiday um we stopped through paris for a day on the way home and that sucked it was hot and I was uh, I, like saw my calves so I couldn't really walk uh and then, yeah we just wanted to get on the plane and come home <laughs> yeah geez um did you have like uh it's pretty tough like trying to train and, and travel like um I feel like yeah you still want to experience the place and um try all the food and drink and everything um did you have much like of a, a training plan that you were following or how do you sort of manage the training block? Yeah, I mean, I, I like I, uh, I've had a coach in the past, but um, yeah, I've sort of settled on just sort of doing my own thing for um, yeah, the past four or five years, um, and I, I quite enjoy that. I quite enjoy toiling over um, sessions and plans, and uh, you know, the weekly structure and. Um, yeah so so I was, it, so and in that sense that was that was a benefit being over there because i knew uh, sort of our travel itinerary and what what were travel days which probably should line up with rest days and um and then yeah um sort of looking at at the you know the terrain and sort of figuring out sessions based on uh what, what i thought i needed at that time um yeah um but i mean yeah, I kind of oscillate between uh, being so invested in the sort of intricate details of, you know, whether an effort should be 60 seconds long or 90 seconds long or <laughs> whether the rest should be like standing rest, you know what I mean, and get so caught up in those details. Uh, and then just being like, you know what, just run heaps and mostly easy and a bit hard and then your body will figure out the rest. Uh and I like I, I mean I think the truth's in in the middle there somewhere. Um, but we definitely went over with um, tried to have the mindset of like we're going to enjoy the mountains um, and enjoy where we are. Uh, and so yeah, the training the training wasn't unstructured, but um, you know I still probably did you know two sessions a week and a long run, and uh, that long run usually was the kind of commute to the next Airbnb, uh, which is kind of fun. Um, yeah. And it was, yeah, it was, I, I don't think I was overtrained, but I was running a lot. Um, but that was sort of a decision that I made to, to go over there and, and do what I do what I love doing. So, um, you know, if I was a little bit, a little bit overdone for the race, that was, that was a, the risk I was willing to take um, for the benefit of, you know running more while i was there uh, but i don't think that was the case yeah i think i was I, I, I felt fit for the race so um yeah we just kind of made it up as we went along <laughs> yeah and um, you sorry no. oh I, it looked like just flying on on the youtube um did you get like a, a ear infection or something yeah i did um i i think in retrospect i i I was starting to get sick before we left. Um, and I was putting that down to like, yeah, teetering on the edge of overtraining before we left. 
Um, and you know, it's 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 been a big year of running for me. Um, it's UTMB. Well, yeah, it'll end up being three or four milers within twelve months. Uh, which I mean, some people crush that in you know in 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 the one month, but uh, that's that's close to the limit for me. Um, and so, yeah, it's sort of um, race Gozzi, then sort of gone, whoa, like UTMB now, my eyes lit up about, you know, trying to be fit. And so pushed through race Buffalo Stampede at the start of the year and then sort of kept pushing. Um, and so, yeah, just before we left, I was, I was just feeling a bit flat. Um, and yeah, sort of, remember cutting a few like hill rep sessions short or just feeling a bit yeah sluggish compared to where I thought I should be um but didn't think anything of it um yeah, you didn't think I was sick was like oh maybe I'm just tired um and so I was sort of um planning on just utilizing that that sort of transit week to get from here over to Europe as like an easy week and hope that I'd freshen up um, but I think the the plane the plane trip over really just um, brought that hand. ear infection to the mm. to the forefront and um, yeah landed in London and stayed with my brother and went on one or two runs with him and was just off <laughs> uh, yeah just dizzy and fatigued and felt sick um, and so yeah when we got to Chamonix um, yeah sort of lined up a doctor's appointment and she took one look in my ear and was like, yeah, that's, that's an ear infection. So, um, yeah, the first course of antibiotics just didn't work, which apparently happens sometimes. It's just like a lucky dip. Um, and right, she picked the wrong one. <laughs> um, so yeah, the first week I, I think I ran once, which is pretty cruel to be in like, what is trail running Mecca of the world? <laughs> um, yeah yeah with the express purpose of being there to run but not being able to run um i remember her instructions were like well take the take the antibiotics but uh don't exert yourself and don't go up high like altitude is bad (laughs) (laughs) specifically the two things i wanted to do (laughs) Uh, but uh yeah it was a uh, yeah a week a week and then i saw another doctor and um yeah she picked some antibiotics that worked then and um yeah i think it was probably 10 days lost in there uh which felt like an eternity and um you know started looking at the refund policy on the airbnbs and <laughs> changing flights to come home and um see if i could defer race entries but um no you, you, i think your mind kind of goes to those worst case scenarios pretty quickly but um 10 days off. I don't, I don't think that, you know, did me that much harm. Um, and then, yeah, kind of got, got straight back into training. So, um, a little, a little speed bump at the beginning, but, uh, yeah. Um, but again, that's like, you'd be there for seven weeks, 10 being sick for 10 days, kind of, you forget about that. But, um, yeah, we, we bought ourselves that luxury, um, just to be able to absorb those little speed bumps by being there so long, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. And um, how is like your your French? I feel like if I was um had to go to a French doctor, I'd be freaking out like over <laughs> what I was doing. Yeah, I mean, uh, Sarah, my partner is uh, she's she's a midwife, and so you know has her head wrapped around the medical system. Uh, and she she assured me that there's no doctor that would get like get certified without knowing English. Like it's their duty of care to be able to um, communicate. Um, uh, I, it was also beneficial that we're in France uh, because my 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 French isn't great, but I did I did live in Paris for a year, like fifteen years ago, ten years ago, mm-hmm. um, and so yeah, there's remnants of that left over, um, and so we could we could she her, her I mean her um, her English was fine, but at least I could try and try and be nice, <laughs> um, so. Yeah, it was dawn. I mean, going to, I don't like going to the doctors. I mean, I don't think many people do, but um, it was one of those ones where it was kind of necessary and um, and like, yeah, comforting that 
you know, she took they, like both doctors would take one look in my ear and be like, that's an ear infection. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, because, you know, you, you start kind of, um, you start spiraling pretty quickly when you don't have a, a, a diagnosis with, with when something's not right. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, they were both pretty quick to just be like, yeah, it's ear infection, take some antibiotics and we'll fix it. Um, so uh, yeah, like it's, it's a little bit, it's a little bit, it's extra stress being in a foreign country for sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I mean, that's, that's what you're there for, right. To, to experience something different. Um, so uh, yeah, we got it done. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I guess then like looking back on the race, how did that all sort of play out? Uh, yeah, uh, I'm happy with the race, right. Um, I was, I was fit and I raced, I raced hard and, finished cooked so um i'll accept whatever time that that kind of gave me um i i felt off the first like 40 or 50 k's um yeah i mean you you kind of you you sign up for for these like long races expecting there to be a battle and to have to problem solve you know something whether it's gut issues or you know you bonk or you injured or um like whatever and I was ready for that but um yeah part part of the um part of kind of getting that direct entry from 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 Cosy was that I I started at the front they give you kind of like I was like the sort of second in the second elite pen um so it was like the first 300 runners um of like nearly three thousand um and it starts on this sort of you know gently tending down fire trail for the first like 10 k's and uh i just remember thinking i was working way too hard and was just being passed by everyone like um i'm I'm typically um very okay with starting conservatively Mm. um i don't mind being passed uh, I'll always try and finish strong in a race. Um, so I was sort of like mindful that, yeah, I'll probably start a bit slower than a lot of people around me. Um, but yeah, you kind of, you get, um, you get to the first climb, um, from Leuge. And I just remember being passed by like so many people. Um, and I mean, ultra running is funny because, you know, you, you look at people and you think, you think like, I look heaps fitter than them, but you know, <laughs> so often they'll smoke you uh but i was just being passed by everybody like that you know i shouldn't have been passed by um and so um yeah in those first 40 40 k's i probably got passed by like two or three hundred people um and yeah that that was hard (laughs) um yeah just food didn't feel good my body didn't feel right my feet hurt like i just felt empty uh and so then you start going like this is gonna be a real long day Mm -hmm. (laughs) like i knew this is a long race and then if this is how i feel at the beginning like my god what what am i in for um and yeah you get like an aid station at lecontamine sort of 40 k's in um and yeah actually like took my shoes and socks off and yeah just as sort of trying to sort of have like a reset um and it but it, even sort of after that we just felt that it's like it, it's a false flat at best um for another 5ks and i was like battling just to keep running <laughs> um and so and that's that that's then the point of sort of not no return but you that's the most you're entering the, mo- the most remote section of the course then uh, so there were there there are people who turn around. Um, you sort of start the first um, sort of ten k climb, uh, and that that is then you sort of it's dark and you're entering the night and it's remote. And I think that's when a lot of people go, oh, it's not my day. Mm-hmm. Uh, and more than I ever have before, started to think like, is this me? Is this my day? Like, am I am I better served just turning around and you know, trying again next year, maybe. Um, but uh, yeah, there's like an aid station halfway up that climb and had some Coke. <laughs> uh, I actually think it was uh, 
like Pepsi concentrate that they made with soda streams as part of their uh, <laughs> environmental kind of push, uh, which heaps of people were blowing up about. But I mean, it was fine. It's just kind of bubbly, sugary caffeine. Um, and I think I think that settled my stomach, or 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 just coincided with myself starting to feel better. Um, so yeah, sort of hiked out the rest of that climb. Then there's a yeah another six or seven k descent into the next checkpoint, um, and I remember leaving that checkpoint just feeling like a million bucks, <laughs> uh, which is like fifty k's in, and just thinking like I'm running like sprightly and effortlessly, and uh, like where was this like six hours ago, <laughs> yeah. um, and uh, yeah, and so then started reeling people in which um, it feels good catching people. <laughs> um, yeah, sort of felt like I was righting the wrongs of, you know, my my below average start. Um, and perhaps in, I, I still felt like I was being controlled and not getting carried away. Um, I think I probably got a little bit carried away catching people. <laughs> um, and then, um, yeah, sort of, um i mean still felt still felt great through the night um which yeah i've I've not done well through the night um done that yeah twice in two other races and both times sort of tapped out and had a little 10 minute nap um which is just it felt horrible napping and then getting up from a nap it did me no good but um yeah men mentally i was i was sort of a little apprehensive about going through the night uh, you start at 6 p.m so you kind of like not uh, you're, you're fresh for the night section I guess um, and so maybe it was that that the night actually felt great um, just kind of yeah flew by um, and come daybreak I felt amazing I was running so strong um, into like the checkpoint at 80 k's um, but yeah, probably that next twenty k stretch pushed a little hard and paid for it. Yeah, the back end of the race, but um, but I mean that that's racing, right? You kind of it's all that that eternal conundrum of whether you push when you feel good and then kind of deal with it when you don't, or whether you just try and conserve at all costs and hope that it kind of levels out into a better performance. I don't know. I don't know where the answer is, but that's what I did uh yeah had a rough start then felt great and then um yeah kind of limped home a little bit but um I got it done so um yeah happy overall it wasn't the perfect race like um uh, like Cozzy <laughs> yeah. um but uh I think the perfect race is they're 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 a one in a million they're elusive um so you you still you know I'm still optimistic that you know the next race is a perfect race again. Uh, that'll keep me going, but um, yeah, I don't, I don't think they come around that often. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Sounds like it was yeah, big day out. Um, is that the the longest race you've ever done? Like in terms of in terms of time? Uh, yeah, you know, actually, <laughs> I did um, in uh, during the COVID kind of whirlwind. Um, I, I raced coast to Cozzy, um, oh. which is 240 Ks from Eden up to Mount Kosciuszko. Um, and I think that was, I think that was just over 30 hours for me. Um, whereas UTMB was just under 30. So very similar races, um, yeah. in terms of time, but uh, like wildly different races. <laughs> um, but in terms of time on feet, um, yeah, I'd sort of been there before, um but but much happier with how i how i sort of managed that 30 hour effort the second time around um yeah it's funny you know the sort of these long races you train so hard for them and um uh, yeah at least in my like i've done two uh, <laughs> big mountain ultras which uh yeah like the Cosy Myler was sort of ended up being quite flat and fast. Um, and so didn't go through the night. Um, mm -hmm. So for me, that's sort of like that, that, that genre of race that you actually go through the night is like 
um, I've done twice, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe three times. Um, I did a 24 hour track race on a whim once. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so, but yeah, I think, yeah. So if I've, if I've, if I've done that sort of level of effort three times, it's like, I think you'd be foolish to expect that you nail it. <laughs> um, that's such a long time where so much can go wrong. Um, and particularly if you're sort of, yeah, if your desire is to, to push and to see what you can do, um, I think the odds are heavily stacked against you for something to go wrong there. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, so it's, it's, you know, I feel like I'm still learning. Um, I want to, uh, you know, not next year and I'm not sure I'll ever get back to UTMB to do, um, to do like a, like a two month training block beforehand, but, um, yeah, that, that sort of, that level of effort, that time on feet racing still interests me for sure. Um, I think there's, yeah, plenty to improve on. Yeah. It's pretty, um, it's pretty different to sort of anything else in running. Like it's, um, kind of just like an adventure and you don't really know what's going to come up. Um, I feel like even like a hundred K or so you're still just running and nothing can go too wrong really. But, um, running through the night just seems like a whole another game really yeah uh yeah and i mean again i'm just like i'm uh like i've if if i've done two or three kind of longer or like overnight efforts um i've probably only done like you know five or six hundred k races um and so yeah still absolutely like plenty to learn in, in, in that distance but for me there's yeah there's definitely a there's definitely a um I think when you when you calibrate your effort to being like an overnight effort, like even a hundred k race, you're like, oh, you go so hard all day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, compare that to like a you know a marathon or a half marathon, and that's it. Just kind of intensifies again, right? Mm. Um, but uh, I think my yeah my um, I don't I, I'm not naturally quick. Um, I. Uh, I think I manage effort well. <laughs> so, um, yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> that kind of, that lead, that leaves me into that sort of hundred K hundred mile genre. Um, so, um, yeah, I'm yeah, keen, like I've got Grampians in, um, it's only like three weeks away now, uh, which will be another big effort, big overnight effort. So, um, yeah, I'm keen just to kind of learn and see what happens. Yeah. Yeah, Grampians, um, that looks like a pretty awesome race as well, like up in the mountains there. Yeah, I've never been. <laughs> it's like a part of the country I've like, I have absolutely no idea. I've seen the photos and, um, you know, watched all the little promo videos for the race and it, it looks epic. <laughs> it looks so good. Um, just yeah, I, I mean, yeah, this is unverified, but I think I remember hearing there's like a there's like a fourteen hundred meter stretch of road in the race, and the rest is single trail. Wow, and like just rocky kind of spectacular vistas, and I mean, what you don't see that a lot a lot of the time when you're running in the pain cave and um, in the middle of the night or whatever. But um, yeah, I'm just I'm I'm keen to explore for sure. Um, so keen keen to see that part of the country and run those trails there, and uh, also keen to um, yeah try and try and manage manage another big effort um, a little bit better, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, um, I think yeah, in like running these big efforts, you have to sort of like plan out all your your gear and nutrition and everything pretty well, and um, it seems like you do a pretty good job of sort of. Um, digging into all of that sort of uh little one percenters and making sure you've got the the best sort of stuff for you at the time um very well like researched in your approach it seems like um it'd be interesting yeah just to hear what your sort of nutrition strategy is for um these big sort of races uh as well as like um what gear you're using and, and things like that yeah sure uh, i mean i think like um I mean, my, my dad's an engineer and I think I, I have that sort of engineer brain where I like spreadsheets and I like kind of 
like I'm a nerd, I'm a nerd deep down at heart, right? <laughs> um, and so you give me something to obsess over, and you better believe I'm a I'm a I'm going to obsess over that um, as much as I can. Um, so yeah, so um, yeah, so the, that gear stuff, I kind of yeah for for the mandatory gear or whatever, I kind of end up just justifying spending spending money on stuff that's like lightweight and good quality um and that you know you buy it nice or you buy it twice kind of mentality kind of justifies purchases that i can't afford way too often um but yeah it, yeah it means that you know I, I i i enjoy that process of gear acquisition and having nice things um uh, but i mean whatever the reality is you you need to stick a pair of shoes on your feet one way or another and they either feel good or they don't but the leg your legs are the things that are going to get you to the finish line so um yeah i i enjoy that i enjoy the kind of gear bit but um yeah still aware that it's like yeah it's a one percent all right <laughs> it's like the the 99 percent is you still actually have to just run and move your move your legs <laughs> uh which you can't buy <laughs> um so yeah, and then uh, with, with with the nutrition stuff, um, I've always I've always tried to um, tried to eat well. Um, I've never had major kind of gut issues. Um, I used to just buy Cliff bars and sort of eat one of them every hour, um, and you know, to varying degrees of excess, they kind of they taste pretty average, and particularly when they're cold, they get so hard. <laughs> it's hard to eat um and then uh yeah like it, actually the beginning of this year was hanging out with an old uh an old buddy of mine who went on i was friends with from my cycling days and he went on um and you know is, is a professional cyclist and uh he was back in town and hanging out with him a bit and uh yeah there's i mean while the cycling world has a lot they kind of that's business right that um i don't like how kind of programmed and big budget and i mean it's his job but um there's a lot not to like about that kind of world um but there was there's also plenty of lessons to learn in that and i mean i guess one of the big things i took away from hanging out with him earlier this year was that they they like stringently quantify their their food intake during efforts um and yeah and so i so I, then i kind of like yeah that sort of engineer facet of my brain kind of lit up and i was like well you better believe i'm going down a path of like yeah quanti quantifying specifically exactly how much food i'm i'm actually intaking um and because it, it was sort of um yeah, the the advice was like, well, just find out how much you can tolerate and eat that because you'll always be in deficit, but like eat as much as you can and that'll help. Um, and and I'd sort of just kind of, I never reached the limit, <laughs> um, but I was not quantifying. So I was like, oh, well, I wasn't measuring it. So I was just kind of like, well, I kind of I ate a bit and then I was a bit hungry, but, you know, who knows? Um so yeah, I just started counting. I, like it's not hard, right? You, like there's the information's all there. Um, so yeah, I I started counting how much how much carbs I was consuming per hour per run, and um, and I think I mean yeah, I end up eating a lot, <laughs> uh, more than most people, I think. Um, and look, maybe that maybe I'm yeah predisposed to be able to to be able to tolerate more than some people uh, i don't know um i think I, I think though it's uh it's just another thing that can be trained um mm. so um uh, yeah i actually i i reached out to um precision fuel and hydration uh earlier in the year because i i was buying heaps of their gels and drink mix and just said hey look like any chance you could hook me up and um yeah they they kind of they they help me out now which is nice um and uh contractually obliged to say yes their products are great but no i actually do like I, I do, 
stand by. Right. We'll, we'll, hi- we'll highlight that. Or <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I mean, I was I was paying. Uh, yeah, I was I was buying. I was a consumer beforehand, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, I mean, it's just sugar is all it is. Um, <laughs> and they just put it in a in a big packet, which I um, they've got these big big like ninety gram of of carbs packets, and I seem to be able to kind of be able to nail them pretty easily so rather than fiddling around with um you know most most little gel packets that are sort of in that sort of 20 to 30 gram realm Mm. Um, and that just that's just it's a pain in the ass fiddling around with the little rip tabs and um yeah so i just i literally just set set a a uh a remind like an alarm to beep on my watch every hour um because you know I don't, I don't trust myself to remember <laughs> uh it's not particularly not after a few hours of running like you you kind of lose all cognition <laughs> uh so just just train myself to like watch goes beep eat another gel um, <laughs> <laughs> it seems to work for me so um and then i yeah i, I fill up my kind of soft flasks with um their sugary drink mix and sip on that um uh, like when, during UTMB um, at the aid stations, I I kind of I had water and coke, um, but apart from that, um, I did the whole race on gels and drink mix, um, which I mean I it, I started being like I'm probably like, like my guts will probably say no to this at some point, <laughs> like I've I regularly trained up to sort of six hours on just dr- gels and drink mix and that was fine, but the the jump from six hours to 30 hours is huge right um Mm. so i was i was i was kind of expecting to um yeah for my guts to say no more gels at some point and problem solve it from there like whether it's you know rice or soup or potatoes or what those aid stations have options right Mm. um but it never came (laughs) so i did the whole thing a whole 30 hours on gels and drink mix and coke yeah, that's really good. Think about it. <laughs> yeah. How's your stomach after? Like, does it obviously does it feel okay after the race, or you probably obviously got a lot of general fatigue as well? Yeah, I think it's one of the cruelest things about like ultras. I find it even after that kind of hundred k distance too is that you sort of you finish the effort but the pain doesn't end there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, I mean, uh, compared to like back when I was running like Sutherland to surf 10 K efforts, you kind of like your legs are full of lactic at the end. Um, and you kind of, you know, your, your eyes might have that kind of like lactic sting a few hours later, but the next day, maybe your calves are sore and then you're fine. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, after, after sort of ultra distances in my experience, it's like that pain's just kind of ramping up. <laughs> you, it's not over. So cold sweats and um, yeah, trying to walk the next day and um, no, it's like you, it's one of the cruelest things is that you're so hungry and craving real food, but your guts are just not up for anything. So mm. um, it's, it's not a good time. This stuff's not good for you at all. <laughs> um, so yeah, like I think, like I finished, I finished UTMB. Um, I don't know what that was. Probably ten or eleven o'clock at night. Um, went home, <laughs> showered, uh, well, la- lay in the bath, and then um, <laughs> Sarah like hand fed me uh, like potato, like old, like old old chips <laughs> uh, from like the the um previous night's dinner like i was lying down she's feeding me she's like you need to eat something you can't just go to bed now um and then i can't remember what i ate the next day but i I can guarantee you it didn't taste good (laughs) yeah how how long does it typically take you to recover is it is it gotten easier as you're you've done more races or uh like the yeah i think it's um for me it's like four or five days and your body usually kind of feels okay. Um, I, yeah, that was, I, I never went and saw a physio, but I'm fairly certain I tore my calf during UTMB. 
Um, so that that was really only now that that's you know not not giving me any negative sensations. Um, but yeah, outside of that, um, I think yeah, your body sort of bounces back relatively quickly, um, four or five days. Um, after which, yeah, and then eating fine and can sort of walk fine. Um, but uh, yeah, then then it's then the recovery is a question of like, well, what's the sort of the the, the depth of effort I can tolerate? Um, and it's usually not a lot. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. So it's, and again, it's like, even now it's, it's, um, I'm trying to be patient with my training and just be consistent and sort of slowly, slowly getting back into things. And it, it doesn't feel great. I think I'm still probably carrying a little bit of fatigue, but, um, yeah, that sort of patience and consistency mentality is up against like racing another, hundred mile race in three weeks time. So the clock's ticking. So it's a tricky balance. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think that the, in my experience, that's, it's that sort of your body feels good in four or five days. And then depending on how deep that effort was, um, yeah, hundred Ks is probably then another week of just easy running before sort of resumes, you know, you can resume normal training. Um, yeah, it's it's these sort of longer overnight efforts seem to knock me around quite a lot. Um, like I don't, there's there's yeah, like they're kind of David Goggins and all his kind of entourage <laughs> seem to be able to just knock out like race after race and just be uh, never tired. I don't know how they do it. <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> Uh, I invest so much effort into training and then racing and um, yeah, I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't just back up week after week. Um, yeah. Uh, like Jeff Browning, that guy, he's like, he's old, but like unstoppable. Like old, oh, he's probably in his forties, not that old. Uh, but he's just, he just races relentlessly and I have no idea how he does it. I want to know his secrets. What what about um do what about your gen like general motivation to go back to the mentality of training? Does that take a little bit as well? Obviously your body and stuff like that's one element, but yeah, what about that side? Um yeah, I like uh, I think I'll be ready for a break after the Grampians. Um yeah, it's 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 been a big 12 months for me. Um yeah, from sort of UTA that then went into the Cosy Myla. Um, I then went down and did the um Buffalo Stampede Ultra Grand Slam, which is kind of a mile of it over three days. Um, and then UTMB and now Grampians. That's uh, for me at least, that's probably the upper limit, or if not a little bit too much for what I can do. Um, physically, and then I think, yeah, mentally, that's wrap, wrapped up in the same in that same space um but i like i'm 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 typically highly motivated and very very disciplined though Uh, i don't i um one of the reasons why i was happy to kind of go coachless um i don't i don't yeah the accountability is not an incentive for me um i'm quite happy to kind of you know if i've if i've told myself that tomorrow morning's an easy run or a long run or, you know, you know, VO2 max hill reps. It's like, I'll get up and do it. That's, you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, that, that, that doesn't typically seem to phase me. Um, but uh, yes. And I actually thought it would be like coming back from, from Europe and sort of having this dream holiday. I thought it would be hard mentally to motivate myself to then, you know, slot back into that kind of, home work home trails kind of training routine i thought mentally that would be that would be the the real hard hard thing um and and my my hope my my assumption was that i'd be able to just sort of hold on to the residual fitness from from running around europe all summer um but i felt like it's 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 been the opposite um mentally i've been um actually really keen to um 
race the Grampians and test myself again over over a big long distance. But um, yeah, physically it seems to be the thing that's um, holding me back a little bit at the moment. Um, yeah, but um, I mean you can't have one without the other though, right? So it's um, it's nice when they both you know seem to be seem to be you know on your side yeah. but uh yeah that's that's i've only got myself to blame if it's not so uh yeah we'll we'll, we'll do the best with what we got and uh, yeah well it seems day. like that discipline is probably <laughs> a very important uh component but yeah dom you've got a similar sort of situation where you've come back from a long holiday but you sort of you got straight back at it as well so did you expect yeah, think- similar sort of thing or yeah, um, but uh, I guess I was kind of like in a slightly different place. Like I didn't have the best race and I wasn't too happy with how I ran. So I had that kind of like fire in my belly to run well again. Um, but also in saying that, like um, from running the trails and stuff in Europe, I was like, oh, I know that Australia's got some pretty nice trails and some pretty nice areas like that I haven't seen yet. And like, I'm pretty keen to just get out and explore those as well. Like, um yeah, I think that Europe's great, but Australia is pretty awesome too. <laughs> yeah, hundred um, percent. Can we chat about your YouTube channel? I'm curious how you how you started that. Like, what, what? Yeah, how did that come into play? Yeah, of course. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I think yeah, for sure. I'm like I'm in that realm where I run a lot, but um, yeah, I think I think the the I think I think precision. You know, are hooking me up not because of my running prowess it's, it's like i don't want to say an, you know, i'm not an influencer I, i'm not but you know what i mean i'm more of a yeah. more of a youtube guy than i am a runner unfortunately um but uh yeah look i mean um i i always had like a sort of just a leisurely passing interest in photography um like for years and years um and it was the second COVID lockdown that sort of um, offered me up just like way too much spare time. <laughs> uh, yeah. Like uh, yeah. Work and family and everything just sort of like, yeah, I was, I was, I was in the clear <laughs> um, and yeah, decided that um, yeah. Rather than just sort of wasting that time, I would I'd try and be productive and, learn a skill um and so had some cameras and decided that um yeah i'd 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 teach myself through youtube (laughs) how to (laughs) how to make videos um and at the same time uh also bought like a a mountain bike um just because had heaps of time and uh we're still running a little bit but you, you can't run for six hours every day day after day um and so, but cycling you can, <laughs> hmm. uh, and so uh, yeah, it was it was it was nice to get get out in the board. And that there was that COVID lockdown where you were confined to your local government area, um, and which was like like unstoppable. Like there's so much bush in in the Wollongong council area, <laughs> and so I was like, well, I'm just gonna go. I bought myself a, a bike, and I was like, I'm just gonna go ride all of it. Um, and yeah, I mean, still absolutely kind of. I guess plays into my roots of of growing up cycling, but the kind of ultra endurance um, slant that I put on exercise through my running, um, yeah, it was just sort of like, well, I'm gonna just try and do some overnight bike packing things, and um, and so that they were my two sort of COVID projects, um, and uh, yeah, sort of started started editing videos and just filled up my desktop with sort of half done clips where I was trying to learn a new skill or um you know a different like whatever different filming technique uh and yeah just just felt that there was no sort of um there was no end game to any of those videos they were just useless clips that were filling up my desktop that I'd eventually just delete and they'd be useless and forgotten about so um I mean, it's funny. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm typically a very kind of 
introverted private guy. <laughs> uh, and so it's like uploading bits of my life to the internet is, is such at odds with like so much of who I am. Um, and what, I mean, it's just social media, right? You can curate to the nth degree about, you know, anything. And I, I so I, I was just kind of like, well, I just start to document like my, my, my cycling and getting into bike packing and, um, yeah, and entered a, like a bike packing. It's not a race. It's a ride that sort of goes from Melbourne up to Canberra called the hunt 1000. Um, so there's a, a thousand kilometer bike packing ride that was sort of like, you can take as long as you want. Um, so yeah, I, I was sort of training for that. Um, and yeah, it was sort of picked up a camera and was like, well, you know, when the sun sets and I'm, I don't want to be out riding my bike anymore, I can then, you know, be productive in another way that, um, is learning skill set, learning another skill set and, um, having a bit of fun rather than just, you know, trying to finish Netflix or something, hmm. uh, so yeah, that so so that that was the kind of beginning. Um, just yeah, messing around with my cameras and learning all the the yeah, learning all the different things there is to learn about making videos. Um, and uh, I mean, as it happened, that 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 the Hunt One Thousand got cancelled because of COVID. Um, I still flew to Melbourne with my bike and rode up, did sort of like a 500 K ride over like four days. Um, and met up with some friends at Falls Creek who were there running. Um, and, uh, yeah, sort of just kept documenting the whole thing. Um, and then, yeah, I, I, yeah, again, just like enjoy it as another discipline in my life. Um, that, that I mean, like that is also like a creative outlet. Um, it's, it's, I, I enjoy that sort of kind of creativity, discipline, kind of two pronged thing that that gives, that seems to give me. So, um, yeah, so I think, um, I don't know what it was, um, that, uh, sort of gave me a sniff of running again, but, um, I, I mean, I, I kept running the whole time, but, uh, I think once, once, um, once COVID was a distant memory and people started running races again, I started thinking about entering running races again and just kind of kept the camera rolling. Um, I like it. It's fun. <laughs> uh, I, yeah. I, uh, it's definitely, yeah. Becoming something I never intended it to be. Um, yeah. I kind of, I liked I liked the I liked learning the skill and I liked uh I liked uploading to YouTube as kind of like a discipline and like an end point to a particular video. Um so then you could start fresh and you know um try again. <laughs> uh but uh yeah, I think uh yeah, I, I mean, I'm, yeah, I don't know. I don't, it's, it's still like kind of a sits in a weird place in my brain just because, uh, like friends who, who have known me since before they knew, uh, cause I kept it secret for so long. <laughs> um, and so like friends of mine who know me, they're just like, why, who are you? Like, <laughs> this, uh, and yeah. And I mean, yeah, I don't, I mean, it's, it's who I am, right. It's just a part of who I am, I guess. Um, so um yeah but it's 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 uh, yeah it's leading to some opportunities and um yeah then that that stuff's fun right that that um there was never the intent um and I never want to like um like my goal is not to make it a business and to be like a YouTuber like I think I think I want to keep it as a as a as a creative outlet that's for me uh I enjoy it and I want to make the videos because I want to make them um and so you know i think as soon as you start making it a business then it you know the the kind of the goalposts shift a little bit and it becomes work and it um uh, or the potential is there for that to happen at least so um yeah sort of embracing the opportunities as they come my way um uh, because that it's it's fun <laughs> um but 
uh, yeah, trying to trying to still keep it as just like a love a love project that um, is a bit of fun and um, yeah, I mean it's so cringy looking back at those original videos. <laughs> I was like, I mean, I'm still I'm still like an absolute like self taught hack that nobody should you know give me any money to pr produce a video for anything that is actually worth anything <laughs> uh but it's cool it's cool to look back on on your progress right like yeah. um you know not that i would trawl back through my own strava from when i started running but i think those kind of milestones are, are significant um and and yeah I'm, I'm, i guarantee you i if i look look back at some of those first videos it would just yeah, it was, I'd want to blow my brains out. <laughs> We're yet to listen. Well, I haven't at least to listen back to our first few episodes. That I don't know. When Wait, we were it's in. the same, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But but yeah, you're right. In terms of the, it's really cool to see how it naturally progresses. Yeah. I think we're sort of similar, like we dominate, or at least like I don't know, a little bit introverted as well, or not as like originally as confident to sort of get on to we never thought we'd be inviting like random guests on and just having a chat and then yeah, and posting yeah. them but it's sort of like like you're saying just progresses into yeah into something and it's fun it is a create like there's not many not many similar things which are like a creative outlet as well yeah. um so yeah it's cool i like that yeah that, um <laughs> what what was it like when it got uh pop, like more popular was there like a turning point or something like that I've, i mean i don't know what the threshold is uh, <laughs> okay like uh, i mean yeah, actually the the um the the first time that i was ever like i mean yeah uh, the first time it was ever like i was like oh people are like people watch that stuff i mean you get all the analytics and i'm sure it's the same for this podcast right you can see exactly where people are listening from and on what device and like yeah. I, I try not waste any time on that <laughs> yeah um, but i remember i remember start standing on the start line of uta uh last year um and i was standing next to mike carroll um, and I didn't, I didn't know who he was at the time um he's a very good runner as it turns out uh <laughs> And he, he was just like, oh, hey, man, I watch your YouTube. Like, it's, that's so cool. Like, keep it up. And I'm like, whoa, okay, <laughs> thanks, man. Like, uh, and then like, uh, uh, so that, that was the year that it was like, or just the fire trail, right? Yeah. And on one of the out and backs, like we, you and I crossed paths. Yeah. Oh, I thought uh, you were and you were in like fourth or something. <laughs> yeah. And you were like, you called out to me like, "Hey man, I love YouTube. Like, keep it up." <laughs> and in my head, I'm like, "You tell me that, Tom." <laughs> you know, I was like, "That's nice to know, but also you're like very, very good runner, and you should probably just concentrate on running right now." <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it was i mean yeah and i mean mike mike's obviously a, a heaps part of the better runner than i am too and it was just it was yeah i remember walking away like coming away from that that race weekend just being like wow like the first time anybody had ever like recognized recognized me or um yeah i mean I, yeah again like obviously i don't know how many views i was getting at that point but um yeah it seems like at least two of those were people who were running the same sort of race as I was. Um, and uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And so I, 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 I don't know what the kind of, what the success metric is of threshold of numbers of subscribers or followers. Uh, I, I still feel like a small fish in a big sea. Like there's, you know, there's guys who are you know making decent livings off uploading videos on YouTube and, um and at, like i mean w w actually while i was in while i was in europe like utmb is like obviously like a uh, uh like a a good buzzword for the youtube algorithm yeah. so um being over there training on the course that kind of like um yeah so like a big jump in in views and and whatever um so yeah i mean it, it just kind of it just kind of ticks along. I don't, I don't know. I don't like it's um, yeah. I, I think I still want to believe that kind of nobody watches and it's just a thing that I do for myself. Um, 
I think, yeah, I think, I think I can, I can reconcile doing it much better if it, if, it, if I just pretend like nobody watches. Um, so, I mean, some people watch, which is, which is nice for them. Uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, about, yeah, U, UTMB, I think was the kind of that threshold of, um, yeah, yeah, that like the, I, I made a video about the race and that is like, you know, 10 times more views than any other video I've put up. Um, and yeah, I mean, and I think if I was invested in that as being like my kind of business goal, then like coming back home and uploading like a video about just a regular training week that gets, you know, one tenth of the views would be heaps demoralizing. <laughs> um, because it yeah. does because training here is like, well, nobody's interested, right? Um, well, just less people are interested because it's not UTMB. So, um, I mean, maybe it's just some sort of self-preservation tactic to um, try and keep it low key. Um, I don't know, <laughs> uh, but uh, I'm just trying to keep it fun and for me as a as a thing to enjoy. Um, yeah, and if it goes somewhere, then we'll see where we end up, I guess. But yeah. Cool. Tom? Yeah, and I think it's a good approach. Like the um, kind of reminds me of one of our friends has like a kind of philosophy of uh, doing something for an audience of none, just doing it because you love it and it's what you want to do. And usually that's what you should be doing. Yeah. <laughs> so it kind of makes sense. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I guess wrapping up, unless Smitty, do you have any other questions? No, not not particularly. We covered um we've covered a lot of ground, which has been great. Yeah, there's usually um one question we've asked like everyone who's come on, and that's uh what your favorite race is, like your favorite uh race effort or race you've com you've completed. Uh, are you going to tie me down specifically to only one answer? <laughs> <laughs> the rules. You can have as many as you want. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I think that the the Cozy Miler is is to this date the best the best effort of, uh, and I'll, I'm proud of that. Um, I think the best the best trail running in Australia is down in Bright. Um, so any any trail race that is held down there, Buffalo Stampede is a, is a, is a, my favorite race weekend. Um, uh, yeah, I think that, that they would be my two two answers. Um, yeah. Yep. Lock it in. <laughs> <laughs> We've locked it in. <laughs> awesome. Um, well, yeah, thanks once again for coming on. It was, uh, yeah, so good chatting to you, like so much insight into so many different things. I loved it. Um, yeah. Me too. Yeah, well, thank, thank you. No, I appreciate, appreciate the invite. It's been been fun to chat for sure